What's going on friends? In the world of cruisers, pretty much every manufacturer goes with a B-twin engine. And they tend to follow Harley Davidson's styling model more or less. But in the world of cruisers, displacement is king, and some manufacturers, well, they've just pretty much gone off script altogether. When it comes to cruisers, you want torque. You want big torque and a lot of it. And the best way to get that big torque and a lot of it is by a very large displacement. Now, V-twin engines are usually the go-to for pretty much any cruiser, just for the fact that they can be very large displacement and they can produce that big amount of torque. Not only can they produce a large amount of torque, but they can do it down low without having to rev very high or work very hard to do it. And not to mention, Harley-Davidson has really kind of set the precedent for that sound with the V-twin engine that most people think of when they think of a cruiser, they think of the sound of a Harley. So guys, don't forget, if you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now, for years, several manufacturers have tried to use other engines other than a V-twin engine, and they've basically found out two things. People love the V-twin engine, and Harley-Davidson's styling model was, well, pretty popular. But if the V-twin engine really isn't your thing, and maybe Harley-Davidson styling's not really something you're into, there are some options out there in the cruiser market that still make big power and torque, and we're going to take a look at those here in a little bit. So for years you saw metric manufacturers and what the metrics defined as a cruiser. They always use inline four cylinders, and they basically the styling would have been more or less what we would consider a, a standard motorcycle style. Now with inline four cylinders, they can be cammed to try to target more low end power and torque. But the issue with the inline four is that they really lack displacement and they really have to rev to make any kind of power and torque. They just don't do it like a tractor down low like the V-twin engine. So the next option, other than an inline four next to a V-twin engine, is to go with a V4 engine. V4 engines can have very large displacement and they can produce some unbelievable horsepower and torque and do it down low as well. Now, take the Yamaha VMAX, for example. Introduced in 1985, this motorcycle made 145 horsepower and roughly about 85 foot-pounds of torque from a 1200cc engine, or basically 74 cubic inch. Now, the VMAX remained relatively unchanged until 2009 when they increased the displacement to 102 cubic inches and then it started putting down 175 horsepower and roughly about 110 foot-pounds of torque. Now, unfortunately for the VMAX, and really unfortunately for all of us, its last year was 2020, so getting a new VMAX today really isn't an option unless you find a leftover new one. But with the V4 engine and that kind of power that they were putting down, it is absolutely no wonder that Harley-Davidson has even experimented with V4 engines and they did so in the Nova project, which, well, it never saw the light of day. Now, what we did start to see with metric cruisers is that they really started to get away from the standard style, what that they were calling a cruiser, and they really started to follow a model that more or less could be compared to just about any Harley-Davidson model out there. So with metric cruisers, we began to see more V-twin engines, and these bikes pretty much started to get longer and lower, just similar to the Harley-Davidson's. But not every manufacturer has really copied Harley-Davidson's style or even used a V-twin engine. They've really got away from that model of the low-slung cruiser with that big displacement V-twin in it. So the Triumph Rocket 3 is probably, in my opinion, one of the most ridiculously large motorcycle engines that you could possibly buy brand new today. This engine is 140 cubic inches, or 2300 cc's, and make no mistake, this thing does lay down some serious power. I mean, this engine is basically like a crate motor for a small car. You're getting 165 horsepower at the crank, and wait for it, you're getting 165 foot-pounds of torque at the crank. That's incredible. 165 horse and 165 torque. Now, mind you, that is at the crank, but make no mistake, it will lay it down. Even being a dual overhead cam, straight triple engine, this bike puts the power down almost instantaneously. At the rear wheel, this thing's laying down roughly about 145 horse and 145 torque. And that's just unimaginable in my mind, but the Rocket 3 actually does this. This is no joke. Now, if you want something completely different that you're not going to see on every corner, 
There is the BMW and their R18. This is a 110 cubic inch boxer engine, so it does look quite a bit different than the standard B-Twin that we see just about on every corner. Now BMW's 110 cubic inch boxer engine, it does put down pretty good horsepower and torque. It lays down about 91 horsepower and 113 foot-pounds of torque, which that's not bad at all. Now don't let that engine design fool you. Once again, this engine makes its power down low, very similar to the V-Twin engine. Now that 116 foot-pounds of torque, that comes on at a nice low RPM, roughly about 3,000 RPM, so that's going to feel really good rolling that throttle on out of the corners. Now even at the rear wheel, we're still getting about 80 horsepower and roughly about 109-110 foot-pounds of torque. And that 110 foot-pounds of torque, that really starts to come on as low as about 2,000 RPM, so that, that is pretty impressive. Now while the Boxer engine is a lot different look and style, make no mistake, this engine is going to put the power down where you want it and where you would expect it with the Cruiser. So if you really want to go off script and get something that you're for sure not going to see on every corner, there is the Moto Guzzi MGX21 from Italy. This is a completely different spin on the V-Twin engine. Yes, it is a V-Twin. It is a 90 degree V-Twin, but instead of sitting straight in the motorcycle, they sat it sideways. Now when it comes to the Moto Guzzi MGX21, I have only seen one of these outside of the Moto Guzzi dealer. I actually saw one at a bike night and they are some really trick looking motorcycles. Now Moto Guzzi's 90 degree V-Twin, it is 1400 cc's and it's good for about 90 horsepower and roughly 80-85 foot-pounds of torque. Not nearly as much horsepower and torque as the BMW R18, but the Moto Guzzi still has some very respectable numbers. And to be honest, it's really not fair to compare the BMW R18 or the Moto Guzzi to the Triumph Rocket 3 because, well, there's just really no comparison there. The Rocket 3 blows them both kind of out of water. Now, being a smaller engine at 1400 cc's, it does have to work a little harder. Now, compared to a Harley Davidson 107 or an Indian Thunderstroke 111, once you get this motor revved up, it is going to outhorse those two big V-twin engines. Now, at the rear wheel, you're going to see 86 horsepower. Now, albeit that is when the bike is revved out pretty high up to its red line. Now, for torque, you are going to sacrifice some torque with the engine only being about 85 cubic inches. So, at the rear wheel, you're going to see roughly about 82 foot-pounds of torque. But, the good news is, is most of that torque hits at right about 2,000 RPM. And with the Cruiser, that's what we want. We want that torque down low, very low RPMs. So that's a good place to start with even only being 85 cubic inches. So what do you guys think of the cruisers that really don't follow Harley Davidson's styling model? The styling is, well, it's for sure different than what we're used to with Harley Davidson, but they do make very decent power. Well, <laughs> the Triumph Rocket 3, that's kind of in a class of its own. That's pretty ridiculous. And the BMW R18, the power that it does make, it really is pretty on par with the Harley-Davidson or the Indian. The styling is for sure different on these bikes, but one thing that you really can't argue about is the power they put out and where they put it down. It's right there, down low, with what you would expect from any V-Twin Cruiser out there. And to be honest with you, it's pretty close to the numbers of what the Harley-Davidson and the Indian put out. So for sure, if you want to be different and have something that you're not going to see everywhere, the Triumph, the BMW, or the Moto Guzzi are a great place to start. So guys, I had a lot of comments asking me to take a look at the BMW, the Triumph, and the Moto Guzzi. And, you know, as you know, I do like Harley-Davidson. That's my personal preferred ride. But I also like to take a look at Harley-Davidson's competition out there. That's why we delved into Indian and we delved into Victory. And I want to thank you all for making these suggestions because I had a really good time taking a look at these bikes and kind of seeing how they compare to the Harley-Davidson and the Indian today. And honestly, the power output and where they put that power down, it's pretty much on par with the Harley-Davidson and the Indian. Now, even though the Triumph Rocket 3, that's going to blow everybody out of the water, but that thing's in a class of its own, as I mentioned. <laughs> But anyhow, guys, I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments. What do you think of these bikes? What do you think of the power output compared to your Harley or your Indian or even your Victory? Do you like it? Do you like the styling? Would you even consider riding one? But anyhow, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. Please don't forget, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And please, be safe out on the streets. Watch for those cars. Make sure you dodge them. And I'll catch you guys back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.